Afternoon, Professor Hooray. Hi, good afternoon. It's been a while since we've had a chat. It is. I hope you're keeping well. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Things are you know, really, very strange times. Um, everything is different. Many people have been in touch during this lockdown period using all kinds of technology that's now available to us, as you and I have. Didn't know about Zoom till a couple of weeks ago. And now I even know about Zoom bomb, apparently, when someone crashes, if somebody unauthorized comes, comes into your Zoom meeting, the whole thing crashes, called a Zoom bomb. I haven't seen that yet, but that's what it's called, I'm told. Okay, I, I, hope, I hope we both kept everyone out of this uh, recording yeah. session. <laughs> um, so a lot of questions um, which we've been receiving, both from patients and from healthcare professionals alike. Yeah. And the key thing they're asking is when and how can we restart elective activity safely? So that's what I want to ask you. Well, I think, you know, there are, there are there's no one size fits all answer to any of these things. Nobody is an expert in this situation. And I think there are three fundamental, fundamental things that we've got to get right. Okay. Um, in fact, I was preparing a little talk about this anyway, so let me share those slides with you. David, during this unprecedented time, there are many people with various opinions being expressed rather than concrete evidence because we just don't have good quality concrete evidence. In these situations, I think it's important to resort to some common sense, which is what I've based my principles on. This is for any elective surgery that you want to develop. Elective surgery even outpatient services uh, or uh, you know, investigations, endoscopy, whatever. First of all, the patients who come in should have self-isolated. They should be screened patients. Now we can screen patients in a variety of ways. You can ask them to self-isolate and preferably they should also have a swab test or other way of testing to make sure they are COVID negative. The second issue is that when they do come in, they have to have a clean environment, a COVID-free environment as much as is possible. No mm -hmm. contamination from emergency patients coming in, unscreened patients coming in. In other words, green again. And they should be cared for by a bunch of staff who are designated to work within that environment. If you can get all of these categories right, then you have a green service and as safe as things can be. Okay. It only takes one of these not to be green to start seriously muddying the waters with potentially dire consequences. Yeah. And in the middle, the area where the actual service is happening is not as safe. So the message I want to get across is three conditions, try and get them all right as green as possible if you want to have half a chance of providing a safe service. How are you at the moment talking to your patients and what, what are you doing? I mean, patients are worried about, I don't know, maybe they've got a, a condition, maybe bleeding, for example, and they haven't got that same facility. What are they doing? How, how do they go about getting themselves um, sorted out? David, this is an incredibly difficult time for patients. Um, Patients are used to being able to go and speak uh, to meet their healthcare professionals, their surgeons, their nurses, the dental practitioners, whatever, to have that human contact, to be able to sit across the table, face somebody. We are now doing virtual clinics. We're doing telephone clinics. I'm having to tell patients I've never met before that they've got inoperable disease or that they've got operable disease but I can't do anything about it at the moment because I don't have a safe service to call them into. I can't get investigations done. They're desperate to have tests. They want the tests. Yeah. They can't come in. And then there is the other group of patients who don't want to take the risk of coming into what they perceive as a potentially dangerous area. Hospitals should be, should be havens not places that you don't dare to cross the threshold of. This is a desperate situation and we've got to find solutions. We've got to try our best to try and minimize the risk, which is why I go back to my three messages again and again and again. Try and 
get the patient screened before they come in, screened with a swab test, screened with self-isolation, screened with a temperature, do whatever, whatever screening mechanisms, get them into a clean environment and get them treated by designated staff who are not carrying the, carrying the bugs about. You obviously believe that this COVID free environment as near as possible is achievable. How quickly do you think you could set something like that up in say something like a hospital where you work? Surely if you can build a 4,000 bedded hospital in the middle of London in 10 days time, in two weeks time from the time somebody says, we need a, we need a Nightingale hospital in London. Surely it shouldn't be too difficult to, to get I agree. that environment. I think the will is there. I think the money has been thrown in. I think it has to be targeted in the right direction to get the message across. Thank you for that. I just wanted to thank you for your time. Um, we will get this out, the message out, put it through the website. Do you think that maybe we could do another one of these in a week, week's time? We David, what I'd like you to do is, I mean, just having this conversation is actually useful having this conversation with, with someone who, who understands both from a patient's perspective as, as having been a patient yourself and I'm, I know you don't mind um, accepting that or even talking about it. You've gone through these kind of frightening situations yourself. And the terrors that you had at that time would have been so much more magnified had you been told that you couldn't have your surgery or your radiotherapy or whatever. Having been told that you need it, that's true. And be told that you can't have it because the service is not available for an unknown period of time. It's not even as if you're telling somebody that, you know, I'm going on holiday, I'll see you in two weeks, and I'll operate you when I come back. It's not like that. So it's, it's, it's very useful to talk to you. And perhaps, could you use your um, magic gimmickry and set up something like this and get perhaps a a group of stakeholders here. The stakeholders are people like me, uh, some nurses who are, you know, who need to provide the service um, in terms of folk patients or operation theater nurses. Patients as well? Patients, please, as well as, and the patients I think are very key patients or even members of the public. Let's, let's, let's put some feelers out there. This is what I think. Yeah. Maybe, Others have better ideas. Maybe think they think that what I'm saying is rubbish because you don't need to screen patients, so you don't need to do that. Either. So uh, I just wanted to thank you for your time this afternoon, uh, Professor. And um, yeah, hope to. No, thank you, thank you, David. I mean, thank you for doing this, and I look forward to catching up with once you set up this bigger Zoom group or whatever. Yeah, we'll put it out through social media and through our website. Um, your, you know, your website. And let's see what patients are talking about. Maybe we'll get questions that you can you can help directly. You and your team uh, can help directly with uh, allaying some patient fears. Happy to happy to help in any way we can. Thanks very Thank much. You. Have a good evening.